Hi, this is Kyle Simmons. I'm an insurance broker and real estate agent, and this is Dingo Talk. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is Dingo Talk. My guest this week is Kyle Simmons. Kyle, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know community days just ended there in Plum, but thank you for yes, taking sir. time to sit down with us. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. So, so it has been, it's been a very long, 2000 and maybe 10 was the last time Kyle and I have seen each other. Um, let's, let's dive back 2008. You were a, uh, you were the starting quarterback for the Plum Mustangs. Uh, and starting safety and punter and pretty much anything where anywhere Bill and Coach Sacco told you to go, that's where <laughs> Kyle went. Um, how do you end up at Lafayette? Tell us the story because it's recruitment's a completely different thing now. Yeah, um, it was it was a good time. I mean, it was a long time ago, but uh, uh, you know, all the schools are coming in throughout my junior senior year, doing the recruiting, taking you out of class and stuff. Um, I went on three official visits. Um, I went to Georgetown. Uh, they were recruiting me to play quarterback. Um, that was my favorite visit. Um, the next week I went to Maine, the University of Maine. They were recruiting me to play linebacker. Um, and then my last visit was Lafayette. And uh, I fell in love with Lafayette. It was a brand new football facility, brand new football stadium. Um, to be honest, when the coach came in to recruit me, I had never heard of Lafayette but he pulls out these big rings with all these diamonds in it. They just won three Patriot League championships. I'm like, okay, and that was D1 AA football. So, um, you know, did a little research and stayed in touch and ended up going on a visit and fell in love with the school and the program. And, you know, that's how I ended up there. So no. it wasn't an easy decision, but yeah, that's a little bit of it. So did anybody else help you make that decision? Was that, was it a family choice? Was it, or you just kind of, that was where you felt Kyle belonged? Like, uh, I think it was me. Um, I feel like my parents might have been leaning in other directions some too, but uh, at the time, the Patriot League was a uh, need-based aid scholarship thing, so it wasn't full scholarship. Um, however, for the cost of what the education was and what I was paying, um, it was, you know, damn near full scholarship, at least in my uh, first year or two there. Um, but I had some other full ride offers, so it was tough to pass up. And I'm 18. I have no idea. I mean, now looking back and you know, finishing up on some student loans, uh, you know, it's a whole different ball game being an adult and having to pay those bills. But uh, it was the fact that it was a great academic school, a great football school, mm -hmm. and it was drivable for my family to come to the games because they literally never missed a game, even like the away games. They missed a couple when I got injured and they had to like fly to Holy Cross and it was a, you know, or a nine hour drive. They skipped a couple when I was injured, but other than that, they were at every game all four years, of my college career. So that definitely played into, into the decision. So. Well now, so for those of us that like I, I played division three ball, I've had a couple of division two guys on what, what is the day to day like for a division? I mean, it's one double A at the time, but it's still, you're a D one athlete. So what, what is that day to day yeah. like? Um, it was a grind. I loved it though. I mean, I loved everything about it. I don't know. I was maybe different. I liked the practice and um, stuff, but during the season, I mean, you have, it's, it's nice that in college you have like uh, a lot more free time during the day. You have to do a lot of the work on your own. You don't have like the time to do homework and stuff in class. It's, you know, teach and do everything else on your own outside of class. But uh, I mean, we had, during the season, we'd have a couple float lifts, two or three lifts where you had to make it within, you know, the certain time frame. Mm -hmm. um, meetings, you got the, you pretty much got the football at two o'clock. You'd get meetings, then you go down, you get taped up, you'd watch film, you go out to practice at four, four to six, six thirty. Um, you know, you're pretty much football two to seven with a few other hours throughout the week where you had to go lift. And then you also went down there to watch film mm -hmm. when I was in college, it seems like an eternity ago now, but we didn't have huddle. Like we were, we went to the, the locker room or the team meeting room and the DB's room to watch film. Um, otherwise you didn't have any way to watch it. So huddles, a, a nice thing to have nowadays, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot, but this, it was a small campus. So everything was really close by to walk to, to the, you know, football facility. And it was a, brand new state-of-the-art 26 or $27 million facility 
like the year before I got there. So um, didn't mind spending a lot of time there. Now, but yeah, it was, it was busy. Now with the football side, because you obviously loved playing football, but you were also, uh, you were a baseball player. You had some other uh, sports that you were yeah. involved in. Yeah. But I never knew the business, like you, you really always wanted to be business and economics. That was kind of your. Uh, to be honest, no. Um, I like math. I'm good at math. So um, that's part of the reason I kind of fell into that. But to be honest, I went in as an engineering major um, during football camp some of the upperclassmen were telling me like, Hey, if you don't know, you want to do engineering, you might want to reconsider because it's a very difficult major at our college and they're well known for engineering. And you had a lot more courses to take a lot more labs, a lot more class time. And a lot of the upperclassmen fell behind on their academics. Um, so they kind of scared me out of it a little bit. And I ended up changing my major before I even started school. And then I tried to, so I changed it to economics and business. Um, and then later on in my college career, my junior year, halfway through, I decided I wanted to try to get back into engineering. Um, it's like a general engineering studies major. Uh, and based off when courses are offered, it just wasn't feasible. And I'm like, I'll take extra courses. I'll do summer classes. I don't care. I want to do this. Um, but it, my advisor wouldn't really let me go. And he just pretty much said, you can't do it. Um, so I was taking like 300 and 400 level civil engineering courses as electives. Mm -hmm. like with my economics major but I had a minor in architecture um and then my major in economics and business but yeah it's a little bit about how I chose the the major so what is life like because like I don't I've never been to Lafayette so I don't know what the campus is like what is the everyday social life what's because you said it's small campus so yeah, it's, it's a 23 2400 students and it might have expanded a little bit in the last 10 years because they've um bought some of the local it's it's in it's on College Hill it's in Easton PA it's right on the border of PA and Jersey okay um uh your, you have like your own little campus and there's like the off campus housing, which is like kind of like, I don't even know how to describe it. Pittsburgh, like South side, like the rows, like three story, you know, little row houses. Yeah. Um, that had some, you know, people living there, but I don't know. I was, I was all in on football and I mean, even in the off season, it was football. I mean, we didn't really, I mean, I didn't really do much and party until the weekends, um, so I was football, you know, five, six days a week. And then Saturday night was my, my night until your senior spring. Um, they, uh, call the football athletes NARPs, normal average, regular person, I think was what it stood for. <laughs> so that season or that final semester, you kind of got to go out and enjoy the college life more. Um, I mean, some other people did party more than I did. I just, uh, it wasn't my cup of tea. I was all in on football and focused and trying to get graduated and get into the real world. But um, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It's not a big party school by any means, um, but for what I like to do, it, it was a mm -hmm. good fit for me. Now you taught, you said before we got into why you chose Lafayette, you said that, you know, Georgetown was your favorite visit. They also happened to be from the, the three visits that you went to, there's the only school recruiting you on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. Um, was that something hard to walk away from being a quarterback and go play just defense or was yeah. that? Yeah, I, I was recruited all over. I had, uh, Georgetown was my favorite visit. I don't know why I like the city. I like DC. I still do. Um, it was need-based financial aid in the Patriot league. Their division mm -hmm. rival I was, you know, recruited in, sold that I was going to potentially be a four-year starter at quarterback. Um, but the need-based aid was not the same as Lafayette for whatever reason. I don't know all the logic behind it. So it was, you know, I had to pay pretty much double at Georgetown, which definitely played into the fact um, of, you know, picking Lafayette over Georgetown. In addition to at the time, the program I think has gotten better since, but their football program wasn't very good. Like on our visit, I didn't even see like the football facilities. <laughs> Like it was like you went out and they showed you the city and sold you on that, but they didn't sell you on the football side of things. So that was mm -hmm. a little bit of a red flag, but I did love the school. Um, I had a couple other offers, but those are just the ones, uh, you know, that I ended up going on visits because they were maybe the first ones to offer the visits. Mm -hmm. uh, but they get offered to New Hampshire to play quarterback as well. And that was a full ride, but I made up my mind that I did not want to go that far north. 
Um, I was fine with traveling that far and the full ride was awesome, but 12 hours North, no go. 12 hours South might've been a different story, <laughs> um, but I did. It's funny how recruiting works a lot after my la last visit, which was Lafayette, like three or four days before the national signing day, I got a call from Wofford to offer me a full ride at safety. And I didn't, I'd never was recruited by them. It was definitely like somehow I popped up on their radar after everything fell through and they needed somebody and they offered and I would have had to like forego all my other offers visit after the signing day. And if I didn't like it for whatever reason, which was probably not the case. I mean, I think it's South Carolina, um, D one double a football full ride South different story, but I just, I couldn't risk it. And I, uh, you know, stuck it out and I'm happy how everything turned out, but just funny story. Well, so as you're finishing up that, that last semester, what is the plan for graduate? Like what are in your head, where are you going the day after you walk across the stage? Yeah. So, um, I was still trying to get back into engineering. Um, I actually had two interviews with some really big, uh, engineering firms, one in DC and one in Philly, uh, Clark construction group and Turner. I forget which one was where, um, but I actually made it through like they, they have recruiters come in, in the, in the fall during football season still. And then I had an interview over that winter break at in Philly and in DC. Mm -hmm. um, I made it through a couple of rounds of interviews at Lafayette and, I don't know if I was the only one or one of the few selected from Lafayette to interview with these places. So I did make it through the next round. I was still trying to go that route. Didn't get either job spring, you know, is rolling through. I don't really know where I'm, what I'm doing. I'm applying for jobs, looking stuff. I was looking in like medical device sales and pharma sales. My brother was in it and I knew some people a little bit older than me that started in there. Um, had some interviews, just didn't get anywhere. And I got called for an in a couple of insurance companies, um, maybe a month left of school or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I don't have any job offers. I'll just go on the interview and get practice. And I mean, I don't know. Insurance doesn't sound fun at all, but um, I'll take the interview and kind of see where it goes. So I graduated Saturday, Monday, I interviewed with Farmers Insurance. Um, and they're like, run your own business, hire your own staff, make your own hours. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like coach high school football, I got time I can do it so um and I'm I'm you know back in Plum so I know a lot of people I think I had a pretty good network for me to be successful in something in that field even mm -hmm. though I had no idea what I was doing um when I first started but um so that's kind of how that and I interviewed for another uh insurance company but I ended up you know moving with farmers and started you know pretty quickly after graduation well and then you you like you said you're now you're back home you're yeah. going to get to, you do get to stay with the other passion in your life, which is football. Yeah. You get to go back to your alma mater on that beautiful turf field. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a different, it's a completely different Mustang team when you come in as a coach, yeah. because yeah. one, it's not the same teams. You're not seeing yeah. Penn Hills. You're not seeing Woodland Hills. And yeah. it's a different type of offense. I mean, you guys yeah. really were, were running gun kind of. Yeah, it was a it was a totally different atmosphere. I can't my first year back, I did volunteer with SACA one year with them and they still played some of the same people. Mm -hmm. um, but I was very distant. Um, I just didn't I didn't have my clearances yet. And I wasn't able to like by the time I got in, it was like halfway through the season. So I just kind of like showed up and gave a hand when I could. Um, and then the next year, Coach Morgan took over. Um, and I was with him, you know, since day one, before he even knew the job, he got the job. I actually knew because a buddy of mine's dad knew. And I, <laughs> and she's like, how'd you know? I'm like, uh, it's plum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I was all in, I mean, I was all year round. I, I run the, or I ran the, uh, off season weight room and summer stuff and, you know, now, yeah. Why yeah. the, I mean, obviously you have a connection to plum. You grew up there. You're born and raised there. Why go back? Why get into coaching? And why go the high school route? Did you, you know, you? I'm sure you could have gone back. Maybe did GA stuff at the college yeah. level, or so why just kind of opportunity? Yeah, I actually. It's funny you said that because I was never the biggest, strongest, fastest, but I was always one of the smartest football players. 
which is why I think I excelled. Um, and a lot of my coaches were like surprised and shocked that I wasn't coaching after college. Like a couple of them, like, like referred me to like some D2 schools for like a D coordinator position out of college. Um, and I was like, I'm not coaching. And they're like, you're not. And I was kind of a coach on the field. And even my senior year, mm -hmm. I got injured with three games left in college. And I ended up like at practice, our DBs coach kind of like took the corners and did some one-on-one, -on -one, like their corner work. And I like kind of coached the safety and did their drills with them to like help out. But they gave me that authority to a degree. Not that I was like coaching them up on everything, but just running drills and helping out yeah. so get more reps for everybody. But uh, um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't against coaching. I just, I don't know. I didn't want to do the grind of moving all over the place and couch flipping. I mean, it, it, part of me still wishes I did. Like I see some of my buddies that are coaching big time D1 schools now and some mm -hmm. like AA schools and got D coordinator positions and DBs coaches. And I'd love it. But I, I don't know, just whole different, different type of lifestyle. And I don't know if it was quite what I, what I wanted. I think I could have been very successful and done well at it and enjoyed it, but not quite what I envisioned for my life long term. So just decided to come back home, coach high school football, have, you know, the kind of standard kind of lifestyle and job and stuff and still be able to coach, even though I ended up coaching. I mean, I was spending 40, 50, 60 yeah. Hours seven days a week coaching um it's a it's a lot for very little money you know so but i enjoyed it well so let's jump into just you know I, i've never really had an opportunity to talk to anybody about insurance you see you sell insurance every day you do i'm guessing life insurance etc right yeah auto home life if you were talking to a uh, college graduate why should a college graduate look into life insurance or maybe do the bundles where they obviously you know you know you don't know what's going to happen so auto home etc yeah. but then on the life insurance side i see this it gets pushed a lot what is the benefits i guess of getting in younger um the younger you are the healthier and easier it is to get um so you can get very competitive rates. You can, I mean, if you do some sort of permanent life insurance, you can accumulate a lot of cash value if you select the right policy. I do think there's a lot of people out there that don't do what's best for the client. They do what's best for themselves and their own pocket. Mm -hmm. um, I never really did that. I had access to those type of products, but I didn't really sell them. Uh, I mean, I think that there's there are situations where it's a, a good product for certain clientele, but it's not to the masses. I think there are other products out there. Um, but that's from a life insurance perspective. Health is the number one reason. You never know what's going to happen. It doesn't need to be anything like super serious or a crazy illness. It could just be like, oh, I got high blood pressure. I got high cholesterol. Now you like start to increase your rate and drop, you know, rating classes. And now your rate's like out of whack. And you're like, well, now I can't afford it. So, you know, the younger you are, you can buy it cheap term policy you can do conversions like later on in life you can you can get sick deathly sick and convert the policy into a permanent policy without having to go through underwriting again so there's a lot of pros to getting it while you're young and healthy um but yeah we do life insurance is a one of our um you know what arrows in our quiver or whatever the, the saying is but auto home commercial is a big one uh, we do a lot of big commercial accounts now. As a broker, I couldn't really do as much prior with farmers. I was captive, so I only wrote with farmers insurance. A okay. year and a half left, open up an independent agency with some old Lafayette football friends that kind of started the company um, in, I think, 2016. Um, but I'm an independent broker now, so I have access to a, a lot more carriers and a lot more competitive rates and coverage, et cetera. So, um, wasn't the easiest decision to start over from scratch because insurance is a residual based business. You build up a book. Um, but doing this transition, I had to start all the way back up from square one. But now I know what I'm doing. I did it for nine and a half years with farmers. So starting over from scratch, but having a fresh, clean slate and educated um, on the insurance field was, you know, it was a great decision. I'm happy I made the jump. Well, so you and I talked. Uh, I think it was last week before, you know, Mother Nature ruined our original mm -hmm. interview day. Um, and 
you you there's some thoughts that you have now you went to school you you did the normal student role right you went did your four years got your degree now you're using that degree for a job if you were if kyle simmons was 18 years old today with the knowledge that that you have right now Mm -hmm. are you going to school or are you going to a trade school and kind of starting your own business and hitting the ground running I mean, I've been a business owner since I started or graduated. And I, when I was making the transition from farmers to Valor, I did contemplate taking a pharmaceutical job or a medical device sales job. I had some interviews and I had a great, and I had a lot of teammates from college that worked for the company and I could have made a heck of a lot of money, great salary, but I'm like, I don't want to work for anybody else. Like I had, I had never done it. I, you know, Currently, rarely set an alarm. I have a kid on the way, so I'm sure I'll, I'll be uh, getting up a little earlier in the future. But, um, you know, I wake up when I wake up. I mean, it's still early, but I wake up and get to work and run my own schedule. If a buddy wants to go golfing, I get to go golfing. Uh, you know, I, I get to make my own schedule, and that's invaluable. And I knew that from the start and why I chose to go this route or continue to stay in this field, I guess. Um, it's just the fact that I have flexibility and no one else can dictate my schedule or my income. It's up to me. If I don't have a great month or year or whatever, it's my fault. And I'm the one to blame, not anybody else. So, um, but as far as college it depends, I love sports and I loved college sports. So if me personally sports, I would definitely go back mm-hmm. now, depending upon from a financial standpoint and the cost of college nowadays, if I was 18 and I did not know what I wanted to do, which not too many people do, but I would definitely consider, you know, doing a local CCAC or a branch school to save money before just going in and, you know, throwing away a ton of money. I mean, not saying it's throwing away, but, or if you're somebody that wants to be a doctor or a lawyer that you absolutely need that degree, that's a different story. Um, but no, like I, I got my real estate license and I've been investing in some real estate the last few years as well. Um, and I see and talk to some of my clients that are tradesmen that are plumbers and contra- electrical contractors and stuff and the uh, money that they can make or do make mm-hmm. on their schedule and don't have to get into debt for four years and can start at 18. Uh, it's definitely something that's, you know, I would definitely consider um, you know, just depends on the person, you know, everyone's aspirations are different and some people want the nine to five and are cool with uh, security and um, the 401k and the paid time off and the benefits, just not my mentality. I'm more of a go-getter and I want to do it for myself. Um, but yeah, I guess every situation is a little different, but it's not like a cookie cutter, go to college. It's uh, more so what, what do you like to do? What are your passions? And then kind of see if that could steer you down a different path that's maybe, you know, run your own business, make your own hours, you know. Go golfing with your buddy. Yeah, yeah. It's a, everyone. Everyone's a little different, but it's. I don't think it's, uh, especially with cost of college now, if there's some sort of reform and things aren't 50, 60, 70 grand a year for a college. I mean, I, yeah. my school, my freshman year, I think was 49. I think it's like 70 something now. It's, it's insane. Well, now they're full scholarship too. So our football program is full scholarship. Now the Patriot League went full scholarship a few years ago. So, but yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a coin flip. It just depends on the person. Me personally, I would have, I would have maybe been a little more strategic with going into debt and just like, Oh, it's just a $2,500 loan for, you know, fun or whatever. I would have maybe been a little more serious about, you know, that but you don't know what you what you don't know especially when you're 18 well and and the ironic thing is is that you know i think a lot of our age group have come to this conclusion that we're not an, i'm not anti-college you're not anti-college but it's not cookie cutter for every person every mm-hmm. dude that, or woman that walks into plum high school for example not every one of them is going to go to college and if they do not every one of them is going to succeed in college so if they can go another route, go the other route, or at least explore the other route. Yeah, you can always go to college later. You, you don't have to go. To, I mean, obviously, that's the, the you know, social the standard right out of high school. But, um, you know, I've seen other people and friends go back to school later on or, you know, go back to get different degrees or whatever it might be. And you can get on. It's funny because you can get everything's at your fingertips now, with, you know, the Internet. I mean, it was 
even different in 2008, 2010. Like we had the internet, but it wasn't the same. It, it wasn't like, the same internet. That easy. Um, you know, I, I love podcasts now. Like that's what I listen to all the time. Anytime I'm doing any like cutting the grass or if I have a long drive, my drive to my office is fortunately only like five or six minutes. So it's don't really get much there. But if I have any sort of half hour, hour drive, I'm always listening to podcasts and primarily in real estate because that's, you know, my passion. So um, lastly, what what would you um, for people that are maybe getting involved in insurance, what would you avoid? What are the things to avoid when mistakes maybe or anything that you learned along the way that maybe had you known it before would have made things a little easier? Hmm. Um, it depends, I guess, on your situation. If you're brand new into insurance, I mean, I was a captive agent before. I worked with one carrier, one system while trying to understand and learn insurance. Okay. If you're new into the business, it makes sense. If you're experienced, it's you're you're stuck. It's it's a very difficult sale because you know a carrier has like one specific client that they're like rating for and that they're competitive with, and it's hard to find that client. Not everyone wants to switch their insurance all the time. Mm -hmm. In the independent world, it's a whole different animal. I mean, you have a you have a solution pretty much for every person. If they're gonna talk to you, you probably they're probably interested in switching, or they're or they wouldn't be talking to you, mm -hmm. and you're probably gonna be able to find them a solution. So. Um, I would say if you're like getting into the business or if you're a client looking to go shop your insurance, I would find a broker that can do the work for you. So like if you are insured with me, I get your business and as time goes on, inflation, your rates go up and up and up. That's just what happens with every company. But as a broker now, you can come back to me and I can go back and shop with the other carriers and I keep your business. Still Kyle is your agent, but I switch the companies around. So I present you to the client or to the carriers and say, Hey, who's going to give me the best rate for, you know, Carlo or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So, so well, but yeah, I look into the independent world. Um, and yeah, that's, that's probably where I'd start. And do your research. I mean, obviously do, do your, your, yeah. Well, one, now that I got you face to face, congratulations. I'm uh, expecting congratulations yes. on that. Um, very exciting tell your mom and dad i said hello we'll do we'll do um for those of you just joining us go back to the beginning because kyle told us a lot of great things and you're getting to the end so uh i'm carla guadagnino <clears throat> this is kyle simmons this has been dingo talk you can find us on youtube spotify apple podcast we just got on wisdom i'm not really sure what wisdom is yet i'm trying to figure it out and tiktok um, the only place that you can't find us just by typing in Dingo Talk is Instagram. You have to type Dingo underscore talk. Kyle, is there anywhere anybody can find you? Well, I'm not much on social media, but um, I am on Facebook and Instagram. My uh, insurance agency is Kyle Simmons Agency. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram um, or Valor Insurance. My new website, valorpgh.com. Um, you can check out uh, what products we offer and uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from anybody. And we will put, I'm going to put that right below you there at the end of, as, as you say that when we, uh, when we do the editing, but Kyle, thank you for taking some time with us. Go play some, uh, go play some puck. And yep, I got some uh, we will catch you next time. We will see right. you guys on Thursday at 10 AM chuckleheads. You want to know by now. You wanna know by now, you wanna know by now, you wanna know